So the climate system inertia is what I want to start with. The vast world ocean, which the image you've just been looking at, the planet is practically all ocean, is the reason that the main feature of the global climate system and global climate change is its great inertia, like the Titanic or like this um, uh, massive um, oil tanker. So I'm going to share with you the very um, latest data, and I'll warn you this is not a pain, this is a rather painful story to listen to as it is to present. So the climate system inertia results in global warming and ocean heating lasting practically forever. Also, ocean acidification lasts practically forever. And this is a quote from the, um, uh, from the IPCC. So for survival of the oceans, as we've heard for survival of the land, global emissions must decline 2020. Even with this recommended for many years scientific imperative, the ocean acidification would continue increasing up to 2050. So we're not only out of time, we're sort of into negative time. So atmospheric greenhouse gas pollution causes the triple deadly assault on the oceans. The uh, three evil assaults on the oceans as a result of atmospheric greenhouse gases and most particularly as a result of fossil fuel industries. We have ocean heating, we have ocean deoxygenation, which results from ocean heating, as Paul has just explained, and of course we have ocean acidification. Now on marine ecosystems and species, of course, all these three assaults act together and devastating to the oceans. This is the latest on the ocean heat content. This record is from 1960 up to September 2019. You can clearly see the acceleration of ocean heating. This is ocean deoxygenation. Uh, Paul's mentioned it, I've just mentioned the IUCN report, and clearly you can see up to 2,000 ocean deoxygenation is accelerating and it's projected to continue to accelerate under all emissions scenarios. The oxygen is, the ocean is losing oxygen faster and faster as we add more and more heat. This shows accelerating ocean acidification. This, you see, image runs from 1750, the record is from 1850, up to 2010, and I remind all of us that ocean acidification is the other direct attack on the planet, and there is absolutely no question about this. These are direct measurements, and the ocean acidification is clearly accelerating. At present, Acidification of the oceans is the highest in the past 20 million years. The rate of acidification is 10 times faster than the past 55 million years. It is the fastest in the past 300 million years. This is what our fossil fuel economy is doing to the oceans and therefore doing to the planet. It is poisoning the oceans to death. And it is coming from investment banking corporations, fossil fuel corporations, government fossil fuel subsidies, and the planet destroying affluent consumer culture. This is the very latest on ocean acidification. This is March 2019 from the Japan Meteorological Agency, which has the most accurate and the most up-to-date measurements. You can clearly see this is accelerating. Just over the past couple of years, it's accelerating. Um, Peter, can I ask, just make one clarification on your last, go back. Um, the, the key thing about the acidification is, um, this is a pH number and it's a logarithmic scale. So a pH change of about zero, you know, the open ocean used to be 8.15, 8.2 pH, and it's, got, it's dropped to about 8.05. And even though that pH has only changed about 0.1 or 0.15, pH unit that represents a, an increase in ocean acidification of about about a third about a third thirty percent or so. 
Okay, because this is a logarithmic scale. Thanks. Yeah, I've adapted this slide. I've inverted it because ocean acidification is the inverse of pH and there's a 10 times factor. Um, the point is that it's very clear that ocean acidification is accelerating and it's very clear that this has kicked up over the past just the past couple of years. So, uh, killing coral. So coral is being killed. This is from the IPCC recent, last year, 1.5 degrees C report. At 1.5 degrees C of warming, we're going to lose 70 to 90% of the warm water coral reefs. At 2 degrees C, that's 99%. Ocean surface temperature increase, the surface temperature increase, and ocean acidification, which is on the surface maximally, kills coral. Global carbon dioxide emissions must decline 2020. That is the deadline. Uh, an old ancient quote, time and tide wait for no man. More life in the oceans will die forever for every year of delay past 2020 of putting the global emissions into rapid decline. That's just an image from UNEP to show that even for 2 degrees C, as well as for 1.5 degrees C, emissions have to be declining by 2020. We have known this, the scientists have established this for years and years. So what about the immediate action that the uh, European uh, conclusion report on the oceans and the seas? What's the immediate action? Stop fossil fuel subsidies, pretty obvious. Charge polluting corporations the fully costed price of carbon pollution, pretty obvious. And prosecute fossil fuel corporations for unprecedented damages, loss of health, life and livelihoods, harming tens of, tens of millions of people. Nothing on this earth is more valuable than the oceans. They're our oceans. We have to protect them. We have to stop the banking corporations and the fossil fuel corporations poisoning them and killing them. Where's the Aquaman when you need him, right? Yeah, I just wanted to add, and I, I agree, that we need to sue the fossil fuel industries for destroying the livelihoods and the lives of, of, of tens of millions of people, but I want to know where are the attorneys, where are the people who are going to speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves, and that is the billions and billions of species and in individual species that will lose their lives due to this murderous, vile expulsion from the fossil fuel industries. It's not just humans that will suffer. I just wanted to add that. And I have the final word. That's fantastic. Well, you know, I... A lot of what both of you said resonated so much. Um, you know, Peter, you started off so eloquently describing the oceans as uh, the genesis of so many species, including perhaps humanity. And the irony here for me is that as human beings, we're killing the, the very place from which we spring. This, killing the life source of our entire planet. Um, what type of perversion is that? Uh, additionally, when, when you spoke, uh, Paul, about uh, scuba diving in Carmel, which by the way, if there is a heaven, and if there's a heaven on earth, it's absolutely Carmel, California. Um, and, and those kelp forests that you described so aptly. Um, and I actually think Shackleton would approve of them as well because as you mentioned, this is where so many, you know, sea life species get their start in the ocean world and, and fishes and things of that nature. So to destroy that is, is to destroy all. Um, and, and it is true, as you say, that kelp grows so quickly, but then you reach a point of diminishing returns. Um, the triple threat that you described, uh, Peter, the triple uh, threat of uh, heating of the ocean, the uh, acidification, and um, what was the other one that you... Yeah, the deoxygenation. 
So these threats are really horrifying, and if you take them to the end, um, and, and looking at the dead zones, what we're gonna have is like you know, little little pots of, of swamp land, this, this fetid miasma, um, instead of this vital, beautiful ocean that, that we've known and love and appreciate. And um, Paul, as you so eloquently put it, that the very blood that courses through our veins is um, chemically similar to that of the ocean in terms of salinity. Uh, we are the ocean. The ocean is us. And we destroy the ocean, we destroy ourselves. It's no mistake that a, a huge proportion of humanity lives very close to either the ocean or, or certain other waterways. Um, so these rivers, these o the oceans, the, these are like the veins of our planet, much like the veins within our body. So I should actually uh, just, just elaborate on that a tiny bit. So 93% of all the heat from our greenhouse gas emissions has gone to heating the ocean. And that's causing the deoxygenation directly. And this year, 2019, was a huge jump in ocean heating. The ocean heat content jumped up way more in one year than it ever has before. Yeah, it's truly frightening. Oh, go ahead, Paul. And, and that wasn't just at the surface, right? That was so this is deep ocean. Yeah, the, thanks, Paul. Um, that goes down to the deeper ocean, which NOAA measures, which is 2,000 meters. So in actual fact, the heat is going deeper, faster. And very recently, that heat that we've added is detectable way down at the bottom of the oceans now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can go to the deepest part of the ocean, you know, the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Um, you know, you could sink Mount Everest in that um, trench, and Mount Everest would, would disappear, and there'd still be miles of ocean above it. And you know, we've transported not just plastics and waste and stuff on on that on the seafloor there, but you can actually detect increases in, in temperature there. Yeah, um, as I mentioned to both of you, I just returned from a recent trip to the Galapagos, and the Galapagos serves as a microcosm of, of what all life is and is meant to be. Every, every animal, every insect, every living being in, in these various islands are all very extremely interdependent. One depends upon the other. You can't harm one without harming the other. And I think that that serves as a great lesson to us as humanity. It's like if we destroy one part of the planet, we destroy that part of us. We can't live with you know, a, a heart that we've destroyed or lungs that don't breathe. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the oceans can be very, very resilient, but we push that re resilience up against a wall. You know, if we just allow the oceans to, to recover um, and to actually, you know, think about all the biomass on the planet, you know, we're basically converting the biomass of all the plants and all animals on the planet to, to humans and chickens and cattle, right? I mean, in the oceans, if we restored a fraction of the life that we had in the oceans even 100 years ago, we would be able to capture vast amounts of, uh, there'd be vast amounts of carbon in, 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 in marine life again. So we just have to, uh, you know, give the oceans a chance. We have two minutes for any questions. Are we done? Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for coming and watch for our sessions uh, next week on the climate emergency.